All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever-glorious book, Even if you don't help the Prophet, Allah helped him when the disbelievers drove him out. When the two of them were in the cave, he said to his companion, Do not worry, Allah is with us. And Allah sent his calm down to him, aided him with forces invisible to you, and brought down the disbelievers plan. Allah's plan is higher. Allah is almighty and wise. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master Prophet Muhammad is valerie and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the day of judgment. When the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him were severely harmed at Mecca, the Prophet peace be upon him allowed them in the fifth year of his mission to immigrate to Abyssinia, saying to them, in Abyssinia, there is a king who does not do any, any injustice to anyone. So join his land until Allah relieves you from your distress. So some of the companions immigrated to Abyssinia, and they enjoyed there a safe life and freely practiced their religion, until they were informed that the people of Mecca entered into Islam. So they decided to return again. However, when they discovered that the news was untrue and they came, came to be harmed and tortured again, the Prophet peace be upon him allowed them again to immigrate to Abyssinia for the second time. And the immigrants at that time were headed by Jafar ibn Abi Talib. When the people of Quraysh knew that those immigrants were enjoying a secure life under the protection of the fair king of Abyssinia, they wanted to get them back. Therefore, they sent a delegation asking Negus for the return of the migrants. He answered them saying, Nay, by God, they shall not be betrayed. A people that have sought my protection and made my country their adobe and choose me above all others, I will not give them up until I have summoned them and question them concerning what these men say of them. Jafar ibn Abi Talib came and stood before the king to refute the claims of Christ and said, O king, we were people steeped in ignorance, worshipping idols, eating unsacrificed carrion, committing abominations, and the strong would devour the weak. Thus we were, until Allah sent a messenger from out of us, one whose lineage we know, and we know his truthfulness and worthiness of trust and his integrity. He called us unto, unto Allah that we should testify to his oneness and worship him and renounce what we and our fathers had worshipped of stones and idols. And he commanded us to speak truly, to fulfill our promises, to respect the ties of kinship and the rights of our neighbors, and to refrain from crimes and from bloodshed, to perform prayer, give charity, and fast. So we believed in him, worshipped God alone, setting none beside him, counting as forbidden what he has forbidden, and as permissible what he has allowed. For these reasons have our people turned against us and have persecuted us to make us forsake our religion and revert from the worship of God to the worship of idols. That's why we have come to your country, having chosen you above all others. And we have been happy in your protection, and it is our hope, O King, that here with you we shall not suffer any wrong. The Negus asked if they had with them any revelation that the Prophet had brought them from God. And when Jafar answered that they had, he said, then recite it to me. Whereupon Jafar recited a passage from the Surah of Mary. The Negus wept and his bishops also wept when they heard him recite. Then the Negus said, this has truly come from the same source as that which Jesus brought. He said to the Meccans, By God, I will not deliver them unto you. 
When contemplating these two immigrations to Abyssinia, one becomes sure that the immigration of the early Muslims was not an immigration from the land of belief to the land of disbelief, as the original ruling is to defend one's land, not to aban abandon it out of fear from an oppressor or aggressor. But it was an immigration from a land of fear to a land of security, as the Negus at that time was not a Muslim. However, he was a just ruler who secured people who sought his protection. This is why it is said, the Almighty Allah grants victory to a just state even if it is a disbeliever one. And he the exalted does not support an unjust state even if it is a Muslim one. Sovereignty may stand strong with disbelief, but it will not stand intact with injustice. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has put the just ruler in high position and a high status on the day of resurrection, heading the seven categories of persons whom Allah will give them his shade on the day where there would be no shade but the shade of his throne. This position for the just ruler comes because with his justice, the whole society will be upright and with his injustice, the whole society will be well corrupt. When the Almighty Allah permitted Prophet peace be upon him to immigrate to Medina, he was supported by Allah the Almighty because his immigration was a positive transformation to build the state, achieve peaceful coexistence and harmony, and to achieve unity so that the Prophet peace be upon him could convey the message of his Lord, the Almighty, to all people. In the eighth year of immigration, the Almighty Allah gave his prophets a victory at Mecca, and the Meccans embraced the religion of Islam in large numbers. By this, the concept of immigration turned from a narrow and limited meaning addressing physical movement to include wide implications that cover all walks of life. With the, with the liberation of Mecca, immigration from one place to another became inapplicable after it had been a requirement at the time of weakness. As Allah the Exalted said, when the angels take the souls of those who wronged themselves, they ask them, what circumstances were you in? They reply, we were oppressed in this land. And the angels say, but was Allah's earth not spacious enough for you to migrate to some other place? These people will have hell at their refuge, which is an evil destination. The ruling of immigration changed after the conquest of Mecca. By the saying of the Prophet that there is no immigration after the conquest of Mecca, but only jihad in the cause of Allah and good intention. When Safwan ibn Umayyah embraced Islam, it was said to him, No belief is accepted from the one who does not make immigration. He said, I will not go, go home till I visit Medina. So he went to Medina and went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, who asked him, Why did you visit us, O Abu Wahab? He answered, I was informed that no belief is accepted from the one who does not make immigration. The Prophet said, Go back to Mecca and tell them that there is no hijra now. It is just jihad and intention. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, A Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue or hands. And a muhajir or an immigrant is the one who gives up or abandons all what Allah has forbidden. The physical immigration from Mecca to Medina is no longer applicable. However, all other noble meanings of immigration are still present. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stated that the real immigration is to move positively towards what's better, such as turning from laziness to seriousness and hardworking, and from selfishness to altruism, and sincere human fraternity, belief in diversity, freedom of belief, good neighboring relations, the work to build men right religiously, scientifically, intellectually, and morally. Such a person is the one who will be able to build his country, make civilizations work for all humanity. 
and preserve the dignity of man as a human being. The proper understanding of the true meaning of the concept of Hijra indicates that there is a particular kind that never stops. It is that kind that has to do with the transformation from ignorance to knowledge, from misguidance to guidance, and from bad morals to good ones, and from corruption to reform in a way that contributes to building civilizations and the constructing of the universe. Since our religion is a religion of construction and reform, Allah Most High says, He has produced you from the earth and settled you in it. So, our nation is one of work, not one of laziness. A nation of construction, not destruction and corruption. A nation of civilization, not backwardness. As such, every Muslim who loves his religion and is proud of it, has to work on achieving its superiority and the dignity of his own country, away from all kinds of divines and extremism like migration to other places to join the terrorist groups and organizations under the false pretexts of performing jihad or the unlawful immigration that led to the destruction and humiliation since it is legally prohibited because countries are as sacred as homes with that said i ask allah for forgiveness for me and for you all praise is due to allah the Lord of all worlds. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his votary and messenger, Muhammad peace be upon him, his family and companions. Muslim brothers, celebrating this blessed occasion, we should not forget that Al-Muharram is one of the sacred months. So it is recommended to perform, perform fasting on it. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, said prayer offered in the middle of the night is the most excellent after the prescribed prayers and the most excellent fast after fasting the month of ramadan is the fast of the month of al muharram muslims are also strongly recommended to fast the day of ashura prophet muhammad peace be upon him said fasting the day of ashura i hope will expiate for the sins of the previous year it is also reported, reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he came to Medina, he saw the Jews fasting on the day of Ashura. He asked them about that. They replied, this is a good day, the day on which Allah rescued Bani Israel from their enemy. So Moses fasted this day. The Prophet thereupon said, we have more claim over Moses than you. So the Prophet fasted on that day and ordered the Muslims to fast on that day. I ask Allah to guide us to what He loves and is satisfied with, and to make this new Hijr year one of good blessings and victory for Egypt and all other Muslim countries.